Today, we're going to show you just how easy it is to create a static elbow orthosis fabrication using Rollian splint materials. This orthotic is used to protect, support, and or immobilize the elbow joint. Rollian has a material for every splint, every therapist, and every experience level. This demonstration will be showing the stretch and pinch technique, which works best with materials from the Aquaplast family. Today, we will be using 1 8 inch Aquaplast T solid splinting material. Turn on the splint pan and heat to 160 degrees. Using a tape measure, measure two-thirds the distance from the elbow to wrist and two-thirds the distance from the elbow to shoulder. This will be the length the splint material will be cut to. The width of the splint material is measured by 80% of the circumference of the midarm and 80% of the circumference of the distal border. The pattern typically has a trapezoid shape. Position patient's elbow to desired flexion extension. Place the unheated material against the patient's arm to ensure the proximal and distal borders are two-thirds the distance to the elbow. Place a mark on the splint material where it touches the olecranon with a grease pencil. Place the material in the splint pan for approximately one minute or until it is transparent. Remove the material from the splint pan and fold the distal and proximal borders one quarter inch pressing on the folds to ensure they remain folded. The material is heated and clear, so you can place the grease pencil mark over the patient's olecranon. With the mark lined up with the olecranon, use the stretch and pinch technique to stick the borders together. Grasping the lateral borders just distal to the elbow, stretch the material around the underlying anatomy, pressing inside surface to inside surface to stick the borders together. Continue with this technique along the forearm to the upper arm. Excess material at the elbow can be folded back on itself on both sides of the splint. This folding technique reinforces the rigidity of the orthotic and provides a finished edge. Excessive splint material can be removed while it is still warm. Use cold spray to cool off the lateral borders that are pinched together. Mark your trim lines. This is typically a semi-circumferential measurement. If the orthotic has cooled enough to remove, it should sound like you're tapping an eggshell with your fingernails. Also, the material will no longer be transparent. Pop open the areas of material that have been pinched together. Remove the orthotic and immediately cut your trim lines. If the trim lines are cut while the inside of the material is still warm, the edges will seal themselves and you will not have to perform any further edge finishing. Otherwise, use an open palm to smooth the edges. Place three straps on the splint, one distal, one proximal, and a crossing strap over the elbow. Shimmy the strap up the splint and arm until it organically fits in place. Then apply the third Velcro hook where the cross strap sits under the splint. Fit the cross strap in place and check that the straps aren't impinging the patient's arm. Splint construction combines a firm understanding of biomechanics with splinting material that's ideal for each patient's needs. That's where Patterson Medical comes in. We're in a unique position to make your job easier. We offer resources like technical and clinical support, as well as training and the best in continuing education. And we're your source for Rollian which has led the way in thermoplastics for almost 50 years. Contact your Patterson Medical Sales Rep or visit rollyandsplinting.com today.